and our next speaker will be Peter Dragnev. Uh, the title of the talk on the best uniform polynomial approximation to the checkmark function. Well, uh, let me thank the organizers for inviting me and for giving me that opportunity. And I had uh, kind of two uh, places I can uh, fit in uh, two different talks. One was in the complex analysis part of the conference and the other was in the orthogonal polynomials. So I did ask uh, Sasha, uh, what should I be talking about? Whether Mergulian's approximation theorem or whether uh, you know, classical uh, approximation. And Sasha said that it is 200 uh, years since the birth of Chebyshev. So I decided to uh, go for uh, the Chebyshev uh, part. So uh, this is maybe the simplest function that is not a polynomial that has a singularity. Uh, this is the checkmark function, which is absolute value of x minus alpha. And uh, let f of x alpha denote this function and its minimax polynomial then depends, uh, that's the Chebyshev uh, uh, norm minimization uh, is Pn of x alpha. And we're interested in figuring out the minimax error in terms of alpha. So uh, I should have said that this is a joint work with uh, Alan Legg and Ramon Orive. And uh, about 17 years ago uh, with uh, Alan's father and with Townsend, we considered uh, this uh, problem. We didn't make much gains because there were some difficulties. But for example, if you have degree N uh, to be three, and alpha is 0.4, that's what things look like. And uh, heavily uh, is involved the Chebyshev equi-oscillation theorem, namely if you have a minimax polynomial Pn of degree n to a certain function, then uh, the maximum norm is attained at least uh, n plus two times uh, alternation of that maximum. Actually, that shouldn't have been absolute value, I apologize. So uh, looking at uh, this particular example again, we see that we have degree three and five alternation points. Okay, the endpoint is one of the alternation points and alpha uh, point 0.4 is also a positive alternation point, namely, that the value here is positive. Uh, so in that uh, paper from 2004, uh, we derived that uh, the alternation points are either n plus two or n plus three. Uh, these are the conditions that alpha is always an alternation point and namely positive alternation point. Uh, one or minus one or both are in a n alpha. And uh, the default case is when we have n plus two alternation points and plus minus one and alpha or among the alternation point. The exceptional case when we have n plus three points uh, is uh, kind of uh, important to uh, consider the flow of alpha, the, uh, you know, how, uh, e and alpha changes with respect to alpha. Uh, we can uh, have the one or negative one uh, in uh, sometimes missing as an alternation point in that kind of exceptional case. So uh, the reason for this possibility uh, is because there are these sections of E and alpha that E and alpha is uh, piecewise linear. Namely, uh, for example, if one is not uh, an alternation point, the final alternation point is B less than one, then any B prime that is bigger, we can do a linear transformation. And what we see is that E and alpha will be linear 
on that uh, particular uh, case for at least some values of alpha prime that corresponds to this beta prime uh, close to alpha. So for example, if you start with n plus three points, uh, when the you know alpha is this exceptional case, when we have n plus three points, we will be able to move, uh, you know, shift to the right or to the left and obtain two linear pieces. So uh, we call that V shapes. And let me illustrate what the V shapes are. So this is E2 alpha and D3 alpha. And what happens is uh, this is that section with the red that is a, a V shape. Then subsequently, another two shapes. And we will see uh, a little more of that. So uh, the connection with the classical polynomials is that uh, EN alpha for that last section in blue here and here is obtained by uh, the Chebyshev polynomial on minus one alpha, uh, that's the uh, one, you know, scaled appropriately, that is the PN X alpha is uh, tied up to the Chebyshev polynomial on that minus one alpha uh, interval. And uh, then uh, in the second piece, we will have zolatory of polynomials where uh, not just the leading term is fixed, uh, you know, in front of X to the N, but also the term in front of X to the N minus one, and we minimize uh, the oscillation. Uh, the next step is Akiezer, who considered where we have three fixed terms and we keep on going. And this is uh, more uh, points, okay? And uh, let me uh, quickly uh, say a little bit about uh, what was proved in 2004 if uh, alpha was a local minimum when n is even. So these are the red, uh, you know, colored graphs here. And you can see that's actually tip of a V. All right, so that's why it's local minimum. What we prove now is a conjecture of Shekman. Originally, Borislav Boyanov uh, posed that uh, uh, the local maximum is attained when alpha is zero, but then Shekman corrected it. Turns out this is indeed minimum for uh, n even. So uh, this will actually, I will use uh, that opportunity with this picture to say what the results are. So we prove indeed that TN alpha is local maximum when N is odd. So on the uh, blue ones, we also prove that the number of V shapes is tied up increases with the degree, namely there are N minus one uh, V shapes. Uh, you know, that's uh, different transitions uh, as alpha increases. Uh, and we also prove that uh, EN alpha is analytic and we find a uh, formula for the, uh, for the, okay, for that uh, derivative. So moving on, uh, the plan is to show first monotonicity of the alternation points in terms of alpha then we will discuss the analyticity of EN alpha uh, and uh, show the Shekman's conjecture and the number of V shapes. I most probably won't be able to finish the talk, but at least you have the outline. Uh, so looking at successive graphs of PN X alpha for nearby values of alpha kind of explains that there is this shift uh, right word, uh, and within a V shape, because of the way that we obtain uh, the uh, 
function E and alpha by uh, translation of uh, the interval minus one, uh, you know, B to minus one B prime, what I illustrated before, we have increase uh, of the alternation points and outside V shape, uh, both plus minus one will have to be alternation points. And uh, by continuity, we will have the number of alternation points on the left of alpha and on the right of alpha to be the same. So let me uh, use this normalized error function, G alpha, that is the difference between the polynomial and the function divided by the error. So that G alpha os uh, oscillates between negative one and one. So looking at uh, this same picture, now for G alpha, we kind of see that as alpha changes, the oscillation points move as well. A uh, similar plot within a V shape indicates the same thing. Now, what happens here, uh, the blue uh, function is actually where we have one extra alternation point. All right, so that's the blue plot. And we have six uh, instead of five alternation. So focusing on small increment of alpha, we will consider a function that will help us, uh, that namely is the difference G alpha X minus G beta X for alpha close to beta, beta close to alpha, uh, beta being bigger than alpha, we see the red uh, corresponds to beta, the blue corresponds to G sub alpha, and the green is actually uh, G. Uh, and the way that the proof of the monotonicity goes, we just from equioscillation, we can derive the G double prime has maximal number of distinct truths. By the way, going back here, uh, this is piecewise polynomial and the second derivative is actually a polynomial. So that is why it cannot have more than uh, n plus two uh, roots. And they are all accounted for in the interval minus one, one. So the technique utilizes the intermediate value theorem and Rolle's theorem, very classical, very, uh, engage in nice uh, analysis there. Uh, I won't uh, reveal more than the, these details. So uh, as we move alpha to the right, we have an increase uh, of, uh, of the alternation points. And uh, in order to behave correctly at infinity, G alpha must have one extra local extremum outside minus one, one, and we have monotonicity of that exter uh, external extremum as well. So uh, this is the first result. And as we move on, uh, this is just to illustrate how that external extremum starts. So initially, I should have said, but uh, let me, maybe I'll move back to this case. So when you look at uh, the tip of a V, okay? It lies on E and alpha for higher dimension. What happens is, uh, for example, in this particular case, we have uh, a, polynomial of degree two that also is a best polynomial of approximation for uh, of degree three for the absolute value of X function as just by symmetry. So uh, what really happens here is that that external W alpha has actually left, you know, it becomes infinity. And this is the connection where uh, we actually start.
start from negative infinity, then you know that's when uh, we are in the tip of a V. Then it starts to move, etc. And uh, that's I will uh, hopefully discuss this if I have time at the end. Just wanted to point it out. Now the analyticity, as I point out, in a V shape, En is linear, and uh, you know it's of course piecewise analytic at a V shape. It's not uh, differentiable, the function En alpha, but uh, everywhere else is, and uh, outside V shape, what we know is that plus minus one and alpha are part of the alternation uh, set. So there are n plus two exactly uh, alternation points. So therefore there are n minus one uh, points, we will call them U's and V's, and we will apply the analytic implicit function theorem to actually derive uh, the di uh, differentiability of E and alpha. So equi-oscillation for these two n minus one points, u k through u one on the left of alpha, and v one to v l on the right of alpha, uh, k plus l is exactly n minus one. So uh, we have the coefficients of the polynomial to uh, uh, these are n plus one, and we have uh, n minus one u's and v's, and we have the minimax error en. So that gives us uh, two n plus one unknowns. We also have two n plus one equi, equi oscillation equations. So we form a system, uh, and uh, that system will uh, look like uh, these are the equi-oscillation equations, all right? And of course, you can uh, see the values of the polynomial. They depend on the coefficients, c's, and on the nodes, u's and v's. And then there is also the derivatives. These u's and v's are uh, local minimum or maximum. So the derivatives will have to be zero. That's your extremum equations and uh, when we treat alpha as a parameter each equation is analytic uh, the j is the jacobian of the system we will study it so uh, keep in the same order uh, the analytic function uh, implicit function theorem says that uh, as long as the Jacobian determinant is not zero, we will have differentiability. And there is the formula for that uh, derivative. So let's write down J in block form. So when we differentiate with respect to CN to CN and DN, that will by N plus two matrix, the B's will be the derivatives of the equi-oscillation equations with respect to the U's. Then uh, the derivatives of the extremum equations with respect to the coefficients and D e is what we call C, and D will be the derivatives of the extremum equations with respect to the uh, U's and V's. So this is what the Jacobian looks like, and uh, it turns out with some nice magic that uh, we can show that this indeed has a very nice uh, formula. Uh, so B ends up being the null matrix. Now, uh, the equi-oscillation equations uh, have single UJ and VJ. So B has to be uh, diagonal, of course, minus one and one are fixed. So we don't have uh, these parts that the zero rows. Uh, in uh, the equations, corresponding to the derivative that ends up being uh, zero from the extremum equations. So uh, that is why B is just the zero matrix. B is diagonal, uh, and it's actually the second derivatives of the uh, you know, best approximant. And this is the formula for the determinant 
uh, because that's zero, that's diagonal. These are the products of these uh, second derivatives. And at them, they're either positive or negative, depending on whether u, j, or v, i is local minimum or local maximum. But they are not zero. So what happens to the determinant of a? Well, uh, that uh, turns out to be a very, very nice uh, 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 matrix. So this is what it looks like. So uh, if we expand about the last column, uh, we end up, uh, you know, with really uh, van der Mounts, and they are all of the same sign. Okay. And because of that, there will be a minus one or one, depending on what the K and the L uh, parity is. But uh, in general, the determinant is not zero. Therefore, we have, uh, you know, uh, differentiability of E and alpha. The formula for E and alpha is actually also possible to find. I will uh, kind of uh, go through it because uh, it, uh, this is uh, how it looks like. Uh, if uh, we use mu alpha to be a van der Mond, but uh, we have uh, eliminated the plus minus one and uh, these delta minus one and delta one are the distances uh, you know from the alternation nodes to minus one and to uh, one and we multiply it together we end up with uh, that uh, a term being positive always and uh, this is what the derivative, the logarithmic derivative of EN alpha looks like. So uh, what we are able to see is that when N is odd, this is going to be positive and close to zero, we will have K and L equal on the left and right. And that is why we're able to establish uh, for alpha, close to zero that indeed uh, we have a local maximum when n is odd. Uh, so this proves the Shackman's conjecture and uh, the V shapes, the way that we get V shapes is each time we switch, initially we can start with the Chebyshev uh, situation uh, where all of the uh, nodes are to the right of alpha. This is when alpha is very close to negative one. Then what happens is, maybe I'll, I'll go uh, to uh, this explanation of the V shapes. So uh, first, the V shapes of EN uh, and EN minus one are nested. That's one important thing. Uh, between two consecutive V shapes of EN minus one, there is a V shape of EN. Uh, uh, after the final V shape of EN minus one, there is a V shape of EN. And uh, before the first V shape of EN minus one, there is a V shape of EN. So the interlacing is actually uh, helping us uh, see what's going on. So uh, let's, uh, for example, consider uh, this uh, case here where we have solitary of uh, part. So initially all of the uh, V nodes are here and there is no U node, minus one and then off. And that will be a Chebyshev situation. Then what will happen, we'll reach that V uh, tip where the degree will drop. So uh, that uh, omega, that uh, W alpha was going from outside uh, this going off to infinity. And when it's infinity, the degree decreases and we are here. Then minus infinity starts to move and uh, we are still in a uh, you know linear part, 
and uh, then the zolatory of uh, situation starts and uh, as there is a switch of now uh, one of the V's moved to a U uh, on the left of alpha and uh, this resulted into that uh, V shape, okay? And this allows us to, uh, let me show you what's going on when N is two, uh, alpha is plotted vertically from minus one to one, okay? So this is the value of alpha as it changes. So uh, originally, when alpha is uh, the red icon is alpha itself. So this is alpha. This shows where alpha is. So when alpha is really close to uh, you know minus one, there is only one uh, green node. Then as alpha increases, at some point that green node starts uh, to be uh, because it turned into a W that is leaving now minus one, one, then the alternation point really is, uh, actually, I apologize. Uh, this is where the transition happens, okay? Right here, where we have actually two nodes, uh, one U and one V, and a total of five uh, alternation Point. So this is that phase transition where we uh, make the switch and then we have now free piece on the right and uh, the node is now U on the left of alpha. And with this, uh, I want to formulate a couple of uh, conjectures, things that we were not able to uh, complete, namely the TN alpha is actually the absolute maximum, you know, at zero, because absolute maximum at zero. Uh, and that is tied up to the second conjecture, the TN alpha is concave downward outside of its V shapes. And with this, I want to thank you and wish you a COVID free summer. Oh, thank you, Peter, for a very nice talk and interesting topic. So congratulations with the results you obtained. So are there any questions or comments from the participants? May I make a comment? Yes, of course. Uh, it's actually about the limit. When alpha is zero, then we approximate the absolute value x function on minus one one. And everybody knows about uh, Bernstein's famous result that n times cn has a limit. And the limit yeah. is not known. I mean, the constant which, to which it tends is still not known. It's much less known that Bernstein returned to the same problem much later, maybe 20, 30 years later, I don't know. And he considered check marks function, which Peter was just talking about, and um, he proved that when you look at E and alpha, which, in which Peter just, you know, the best, uh, uh, the rate, uh, the error of best approximation, then Bernstein showed that N times E and alpha still has a limit. And he identified the limit as, as, the, as his constant from the mod X limit times square root of minus alpha squared. So Peter, like uh, the concavity that you just described, may be related that in the limit this concavity appears. That what you just you know said, in the limit it's true because square root of minus alpha squared is is such a function. So anyway, so just just you know we, we know about Bernstein theorem, but it's much less known that Bernstein actually considered the more general case when the vertex is not at the origin, but at some point, yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. I will uh, take a look at that uh, paper. I think I've, I've seen it, but 
you know, it's, it's good that you reminded me about it. So are there any other questions? Do we have more questions here? No, we, uh, we are, I also wanted to do the same comment as you, <laughs> Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry about that. Okay. So, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, Sereja, <laughs> shall we finish? <laughs> yes, we should finish.